All right, so open up a new file in Blender, get rid of your cube, hit seven for top view, add in a plane, go to your subdivision modifier, add the simple one, add like as many as you can, <laughs> apply it, check and see how dense it is, pretty good, hit tab to go back to object mode, Go down to this little triangle vertex thingy mobobber down here. Add a new group. Name it. Um, go back to your modifier, the little wrench thingy. Add a vertex weight edit modifier. Pick your vertex group. Make sure you put group add. Leave the threshold as is. Change to sharp, fall off, go under influence and pick new mask texture, and then open up the picture file I have on my desktop. The one you sent me is uh, white on black, it needs to be black on white. So if you need to take it into Photoshop or if you want me to just send you this one, um, if you take it to Photoshop to invert it, it's pretty simple, you just load the image in, you go up to layers, uh, adjustments, and then invert, it's pretty easy. Open it, go back up to your modifiers, add a mask modifier, select your group again, and then add another subdivision surface modifier, Go down to the bottom, change your subdivision surface modifier to be on the top. So down here it says move to first. And then go back down to your mask modifier. Or sorry, no, go to your uh, vertex weight modifier and then change the default weight just like slightly. And then let me zoom in. And then it's super pixelated because even though we added all those uh, subdivisions, it still just isn't enough. So go back to your new one, and it only lets you go up to six, so that's why I have to add a second one, is because six is the highest you can go. So then just add a couple more. I probably don't need that many. Like, yeah, that actually looks better like that. There you go, cool, that part's done. Then you can add a solidify modifier. Scroll all the way down to it. Make it decently thick. And then you can just apply all your modifiers. And then make that a little bit smaller. Um, go ahead and add in an empty, just a plain axis, just an empty plain axis is fine to the center where the origin is. Um, let me see, go up here to your little scene collection box up here and name it to mirror object and then you can open up your gun file you want to import it so don't just like open it you have to import the STL separately where did I put that one? Oh, it's on my desktop okay <laughs> this takes a while to pop into the scene because whoever had the original file like they made it gigantic alright there it is see you can't even see it because it's just huge. So let's make it a little bit smaller with our scale. Okay, there it is. Go to set origin in your object tab. Geometry to origin. Bam, there it is. Um, take your little image that you made into a mesh and hit RX90 and then move it on over. Let's see, is that straight? I don't know if that's straight or not. Let me check. I'm going to rotate it slightly. Okay. So this is where the mirroring comes in because you want it to be on both sides, right? But you also want it to be a little bit smaller so it can actually fit on there. And then rotate it, let me think, along the Y axis, Jessica, derp. Okay. And then let me rotate it a little bit more again because now it decided to be stupid. All right, let's mirror it. So go to your modifier, making sure you're still selected on your little thingy mobobber there. 
go to mirror, Y axis, or I mean, I guess if you're facing the other way, depending on which way you decided you wanted to like, face. And then choose your mirror object, and then bam, there it is, but it's not, uh, the gun is not perfectly center, as you can see right here. So we can either move the gun over or we can just move our mirror modifier, like I'd rather just move it. So apply our mirror, we then go to edit mode, which also takes forever because it's very dense. Um, come up here to your x-ray little thingy, thing thing right here, and then select all of that. Hit G, Y, or G, X again, wherever you're facing. And move it like so. And then I'll check that in a second. Okay, go back to object mode. Get rid of your x-ray thing. And then, yeah, see, so it's not exactly how I want it to be. So I'm going to go back to edit mode and then rotate it a little bit. Like this. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> I want it to be perfect. There we go. Beautimus. Alright, so let's pull it out like just a hair more actually. Bam. Perfect. Okay. Go back to object mode. Check and see if you can see both of them. Super cool, super awesome, super dandy. Okay. Now you can go into sculpt mode. Hit G for grab, make your cursor bigger, and then zoom in on like these little corners that kind of stick out because it's not absolutely perfect. And then you can move it over like that. And whichever parts you want to move it over on. That way it kind of looks like it's sort of like wrapping around the side, you know, and it's not just like this straight thing. Cool. I did yours a lot like more carefully than this, but I'm just giving you the gist. <laughs> so there you go, then it's added like that, and then if you want to have the good view of it, where it's not just ugly like this, then get rid of your grid, get rid of your floor, get rid of the extras so you don't have to see the stupid uh, thing. <laughs> go up here, select matte cap, choose, I had it on the black one, but honestly I feel like this like shiny one looks kind of better. And then go to single, and then make it darker. Oh, I didn't mean to go out of it. And then go back into it, if you go out of it. <laughs> and then choose shadow and cavity. And now it looks bomb.com. You're welcome.